Hey guys, welcome back to Contest Prep University. I'm Joe Klimczewski with Adam Atkinson, episode four in our series on the metabolic switch. Adam, you opened up this whole series talking about your experience just doing, I think it was just a full one day fast. And uh, I mentioned this before, but way back in uh, my first master's degree, I did a, um, a, a class in medical fasting. And for extra credits, I did a one day a week fast for the whole semester. And then I ended up doing a, a longer fast, uh, a five day, zero calorie, pure water fast. And, and I wanted because of the whole intermittent fasting pop culture craze, I wanted to just kind of dabble with the skin and, and kind of relearn some of those things. It's one of the greatest things I've done in years because I'm, I'm feeling those changes in my body by, by just resensitizing, literally, you know, receptor sites to blood sugar, insulin, glucagon, things like that. So I started this I, two weeks in a row now of doing a dinner to dinner fast on Mondays. And exactly like you, you know, I, I, I ate dinner, go all the way through, you know, miss breakfast by lunch is when I'm getting, I'm getting so hungry. I'm just, I'm just ready to punch a hole through my wall. And, uh, and that's that metabolic switch happening around that 12 hour mark is where most people start that process. And that's where the concept of intermittent fasting came into play. Once you are there and you're entering at least trace ketosis, let's keep the ball rolling. You know, even if you're not going to go into a full fast prolonged from that, let's at least expand that window to 16 hours and then create an eight hour feeding period. That's, that's where that all came from. Now I'm, I'm the first one to always say, look, I'm not, I don't care if it's 16 hours or 18 or 14, like, you know, the physiology of everybody's different anyway, but do you as a coach suggest this, or do you have people who like to do intermittent fasting and that's just the way they're going to do it, period. I, I will, this is probably the least uh, out of all the ones we're going to talk about. Um, IF, funny enough, is the most popular. Um, so it's the one people ask me about the most, and it's probably the one I use the least. Because um, you're still consuming um, what I would say is a massive amount of food then all at one time. Um, that's not always the best for digestion, pre and post workout um, planning. And then also, you know, you're, again, the point of the fast is a little bit of calorie restriction, right? Um, so unless I have somebody maybe like carb cycling, which I, I don't do too often, unless I'm really trying to hit a low point, um, maybe in that regard, I might have someone do an IF on one of their um, lower days, just to make it seem a little bit easier on them. Uh, but I also disagree with the fact if you're doing IF, you're just not spreading your protein out throughout the day, which, you know, we know is going to lead to better protein synthesis. So that's kind of one of the, my biggest dilemmas with it is, uh, I, I don't really change a whole lot with doing IF with someone aside from they're still eating the same amount of calories. So if someone's really married to the idea, I say, sure, go ahead and do it. I'm not going to win this fight. Um, but I just explained to them that there's different types of fasting we can do that actually may benefit our situation better. Mm -hmm. and, and, and I agree with everything you just said. And, and what I like to say is that fasting window, you have a fasting window anyway, just because of sleep. So whether it's eight, 10, 12, or 16 hours, the other part of the day is arguably far more important. You know, we talked about in the last episode, the time restricted nature of eating, why you shouldn't just snack and graze all day because you're, you're just titrating glucose. You try to get that metabolic switch from glucose dominant to fatty acid dominant. And if you're just titrating glucose in all day long, you're just, you're constantly going the wrong direction. It's going to keep you hungrier. You're going to always feel worse and you're not going to burn body fat as fast, even on the same amount of calories. There's a huge difference in the amount of fat you can lose. So I agree. It's, you know, pick the window you want. And especially for a competitor who's already in a calorie deficit, we're probably training in the morning or evening and so that makes it way harder to manage a longer fasting window. So if you can do 16 hours and that's what you prefer, I know your body does adjust and that's part of this process. We're going to end with this in episode five, but your body does adjust. You become more efficient at using fat as energy and you can feel fine. Maybe you even prefer that feeling, but it's not for everybody. And that's why I just don't put my stamp of approval on intermittent fasting 
in an eight, 16 hour window as the only way or the best way. It's just, it's one more tool, but there are other ways to manage it. I think it's married pretty well with intuitive eating. I say that carefully, your intuition has to be based on a history of successful dieting. And um, one thing I see is a lot of people want to do intuitive eating who are unsuccessful dieters because you can't F it up. <laughs> You know, you can't make your own rules. So um, I do have people who are, you know, doing mostly intuitive eating with um, some calorie checkpoints along the way who say, hey, like, I'm going to do intermittent fasting this day because I have a wedding or a dinner with family. And I tell them as long as your intuition and your hunger isn't so sky high by the time you have those meals, that's fine. So just really intuitively listen to your body. Um, that might be where I use IF the most um, or in maybe those off season scenarios versus in season. Yeah. just just per the context that you want. So what well said. All right, guys, we got one more episode. We're going to close this out talking about actual periodic fasting, which is what uh, Adam and I described a little bit. So we're going to wrap it up next time. We will see you in episode five.